The anime begins with Hao Ren, a recent university graduate looking for a job. He goes to his desired company but finds it closed, so he decides to take a rest on a bench. Later that afternoon, Hao Ren is awakened by Li Li Lu, a beautiful girl with short hair, who asks him for directions while holding a flyer. When Hao Ren examines the map on the flyer, he realizes that the address Li Li is looking for is actually his own residence. It turns out that his parents gave him this house on the outskirts of town, where they also rent out a room at a very low price. Excitedly, he tells Li Li that the house she's looking for is the one she's standing in front of, and she's thrilled because she wants to rent that exact room, which they make plans to meet in person to finalize the arrangement. Shortly after, Hao Ren and Li Li board a bus headed for his home. During the journey, Li Li starts feeling nervous, worried that Hao Ren might be tricking her, like the villains in kidnapping stories on television. But Hao Ren finds her anxiety amusing, considering her unique personality. When they arrive at the closest bus stop to Hao Ren's house, they decide to walk the rest of the way. Suddenly, Li Li's suitcase starts falling apart. When she tries to fix it by kicking it, it only makes things worse. Seeing this, Hao Ren offers to help and lifts the suitcase, but to his surprise, it's very heavy, and he struggles to lift it. He's amazed at how such a small girl can carry such a heavy load. Eventually, Li Li decides to carry it on her shoulders, and this leaves Hao Ren impressed by her strength and determination as she plans to rent a room in his house. As Hao Ren and Li Li walked towards his house, they were surprised when Vivian Anseda, a vampire girl, suddenly appeared. Li Li urgently told Hao Ren to run and stay safe, but he insisted on protecting her, showing his bravery. However, Li Li, showing her strength, pushed him away firmly, not wanting to put him in danger. The situation became even more intense when Li Li transformed into a dog demon with long white hair, confronting Vivian. During their confrontation, Vivian suspected that Li Li had hidden motives for involving Hao Ren, so she disappeared, leaving Hao Ren alone. But Li Li quickly intervened, saving him from Vivian's attacks and even throwing bricks at her, making Vivian retreat. After the conflict was over, they continued to Hao Ren's house. When they arrived, Li Li went to her own room to rest. However, she asked Hao Ren to keep quiet about the strange events that had happened. The next morning, while Li Li was in the living room, she suddenly screamed, startling Hao Ren, who rushed to help her. To his surprise, she was afraid of Hao Ren's cat, Goon, even though she was a dog demon. After calming her down, Li Li expressed a desire to watch the news on TV. However, their plans were ruined because the television was not working properly, depriving them of the chance to stay updated. While they tried to fix the TV, Vivian suddenly appeared again and attacked Li Li inside the house. Surprisingly, she didn't try to take Hao Ren away this time. Instead, she asked him to leave because she wanted to confront Li Li in a decisive battle. The situation became more intense as the fierce fight between Vivian and Li Li caused significant damage to the furniture in Hao Ren's house. Frustrated, Hao Ren intervened and stopped the fight. He demanded that both girls take responsibility and compensate for the extensive damage caused during their battle. Following Hao Ren's growing frustration, both Li Li and Vivian quickly apologized. Curious about Vivian's sudden appearance, Hao Ren asked about her intentions. Surprisingly, Vivian expressed her desire to rent a room, similar to Li Li's wish. As they talked, Vivian's loud stomach growls revealed her hunger, prompting Hao Ren to cook a meal for all of them. During their conversation, Hao Ren questioned why Vivian chose his place instead of more luxurious options. Vivian explained that the low rent was the main reason. Although initially hesitant, Hao Ren eventually agreed to let them stay. However, tensions between Li Li and Vivian arose again leading to arguments and provocations. Vivian's insult towards Li Li sparked her anger, resulting in action that accidentally broke a table. Feeling both frustrated and annoyed, Hao Ren scolded Li Li for her reckless actions and insisted that she repay the cost of the broken table. This scolding served as a reminder of the need for responsibility. After tension seized, Hao Ren assigned Li Li the task of cleaning up while he accompanied Vivian to inspect her room. Vivian was pleased with the spaciousness of her room, but realized she had left her belongings outside. Using a clever tactic, she entered through the bedroom window to retrieve her forgotten items. Upon returning, Vivian was disappointed to find her money replaced by leaves. Unable to pay her rent, she felt distressed. However, Hao Ren, understanding her situation, allowed her to stay with the agreement that she would pay once she got her money. Hearing this, Vivian was grateful and even offered to cook for them. 
However, Li Li doubted Vivian's cooking skills. To prove herself, they gathered in the kitchen, where Vivian showing her cooking abilities. Much to their delight, her dishes received praise from both Hao Ren and Li Li, dispelling any doubts. Their enjoyment of the delicious meal came to a stop when Vivian's phone rang. In a playful act, Li Li grabbed Hao Ren's phone with her mouth. At that moment, Hao Ren received an unexpected call from a trading company, requesting an interview at 2 p.m. that same day. Despite concerns about the short notice and the distance from his home, the caller insisted he attend, leaving him with no choice but to reluctantly agree. Shortly after, Hao Ren took a bus to the address provided by the company. However, things took a surprising turn when the caller instructed him to touch a flyer on a power pole and observe his surroundings. To his amazement, Hao Ren saw a floating building, realizing it was the trading company. The caller warned him to approach secretly, prompting him to adopt a stealthy approach like a secret agent. Upon reaching the building, Hao Ren couldn't help but admire it. However, he was directed by a holographic guide to the administrative section. There he encountered Raven 12,000, 345, who casually introduced herself as his boss. While Hao Ren was serious and prepared for the interview, Raven seemed relaxed, enjoying a cup of noodles. Confused by the difference between the building's appearance and its supposed function as a trading company, Hao Ren asked Raven for clarification. Surprisingly, Raven revealed that it wasn't a trading company at all. Instead, he had stumbled into the executive department of the Si Ling Empire, responsible for overseeing universal affairs. Hao Ren's new role involved assisting in the Divine Palace, managing crucial tasks like preventing species extinction and controlling celestial events. Raven then showed him a high-tech control room with advanced technology, allowing him to monitor the space. His main duty was to maintain order among the residents to ensure they didn't interfere with human affairs. Faced with a crucial choice after meeting Raven, Hao Ren had to decide whether to accept a job offer that could change his life or risk having his memory erased of the past two days. Considering the benefits like salary and health coverage, Hao Ren thought deeply before finally agreeing to the opportunity, signing the job training contract offered by Raven. Shortly after, he returned home excitedly and shared the news of his new job with Yi Vian and Li Li. However, they worried that his duties sounded like those of demon hunters, sparking concern. They discussed recent demon hunter news, but Hao Ren struggled to understand their conversation. Later during his sleep, Hao Ren had a dream where he found himself in an unfamiliar place. Meeting friendly wolves in his dream, he woke suddenly to find himself holding a piece of wolf fur. Excited to reveal his mysterious find, Hao Ren called upon Li Li and Vivian. Vivian, driven by curiosity, closely examined the feather-like object, considering the possibility of it being linked to dark magic. However, her inspection revealed no signs of such signs. On the other hand, Li Li, skilled in identifying wolf fur, noticed distinct characteristics, suggesting that the fur was not ordinary. Concerned for Hao Ren's safety, Vivian gave him protective amulets. Unfortunately, the amulets didn't work, providing no defense against potential dangers. Confused by this, Vivian doubted the effectiveness of her efforts. Later, suspicions arose in Hao Ren's mind about Vivian's true identity imagining the idea that she might be a vampire allied with a priestly group. However, Vivian's attempts to use her powerful blood spells failed, with the blood disappearing. Similarly, her supposed hypnotic abilities only made Li Li feel sleepy and having no effect on Hao Ren. During the ongoing events, Raven suddenly appeared, calling for Hao Ren for an urgent task. The next day, Hao Ren arrived at his workplace, full of anticipation, only to find it deserted, resembling a lonely empty town. Suddenly, Raven emerged, dressed differently, wearing gardening clothes, and holding a mighty sword confidently. After a short while, Raven reminded Hao Ren of the reason for his summons and led him to her room. Inside, he encountered an extraordinary and highly secretive device called Zhang Duan, a sophisticated technological that he had never seen before. Eager to understand how it worked, Hao Ren asked Raven for guidance. Raven then explained that Zhang Duan operated through a neural interface responding to the user's thoughts when held in the hand. She detailed its ability to summon assistance from distant planets during emergencies, highlighting its importance in their divine missions. However, Raven revealed an important condition. If Hao Ren decided to become a divine agent, his soul would continue to inhabit successive bodies after his death, ensuring eternal existence. This explanation led Hao Ren to reflect deeply and feel anxious about his life. 
Following this revelation, Hao Ren expressed curiosity about his upcoming duties, leading Raven to invite him to the Strengthening Center, a facility designed to equip newcomers like him with special abilities for their missions. Unexpectedly, Raven directed Hao Ren to a strange-looking coffin and urged him to enter it. Despite his initial hesitation, Hao Ren obeyed to Raven's persuasive insistence and went inside the coffin, where Raven promised to give him an injection of a transformative element to enhance his abilities. As the procedure began, Hao Ren experienced intense discomfort, similar to electric shocks, causing Raven to question the safety and effectiveness of the strengthening process and raising doubts about its intended outcome. Suddenly, Hao Ren found himself back at the place where he had encountered the wolf in his dream, accompanied by Jean Guan, ready to help. Feeling the cold and confused, Hao Ren didn't ask for directions but instead requested a fur coat to keep warm. However, Jean Duan calmly declined Hao Ren's request, explaining that he was a guide, not a magical being that grant his wishes. Following Jean Duan's guidance, Hao Ren embarked on an exploration. Surprisingly, the once threatening presence of wolves had vanished, leaving the area. In a critical moment, Zhang Duan warned Hao Ren to complete his mission safely in the unfamiliar place, cautioning that failure could have consequences in real life. Despite encountering strange phenomena beyond human experience, Hao Ren remained calm and determined as he navigated through the unknown environment. Not long after, Zhang Duan, tired from continuous flight, chose to take refuge in Hao Ren's pocket, seeking rest from a long journey. Suddenly, Hao Ren noticed a movement coming from the bushes indicating an ambush by a group of fierce wolves preparing to attack. Reacting quickly, Hao Ren activated a protective shield and engaged in a fierce battle against the attacking wolves. Despite Hao Ren's resistance, the wolves persisted and called upon their leader to intensify the fight. Meanwhile, on a nearby hill, the commotion caused by the wolf pack caught the attention of their powerful leader, who swiftly intervened. Realizing the seriousness of the situation, Hao Ren swiftly retreated to a meadow closely followed by the relentless wolf leader. Thankfully, Hao Ren's defensive shield offered crucial protection against the relentless attacks. As the chase continued, it became clear that the leader of the wolf pack could speak, which astonished Hao Ren. Surprisingly, more hungry wolves, including cute pups, arrived there. Using his negotiation skills, Hao Ren struck a deal with the wolf leader. He proposed returning to the wolves' world in exchange for their help in finding a place where ordinary humans lived. Though initially skeptical, the wolf leader cautiously agreed to Hao Ren's offer, deciding to take a chance. Shortly after, the journey began, with Hao Ren riding on the wolf leader's back as they set out to find the human place he looking for. Upon reaching their destination, the wolf leader bid farewell to Hao Ren, reminding him of their agreement. Inside the simple hut, Hao Ren improvised by using Zhang Duan as a flashlight, despite showing resistance. At that moment, Hao Ren accidentally triggered a mysterious phenomenon causing a sudden hurricane to emerge, illuminating the hut's interior. On the other hand, Li Li tried to help an injured dog, but it ran away when she approached. Undeterred, she chased after it and accidentally bumped into a stranger. Despite apologizing quickly, the encounter was odd because the person didn't seem bothered by the collision. At the same time, Vivian happily used a new vacuum cleaner, which turning her cleaning into a fun dance party with her singing. When Li Li returned with the rescued dog, she interrupted Vivian's cleaning, annoying her. Return to Raven, who was patiently waiting for Hao Ren to return from his mission while enjoying a cup of noodles. When Hao Ren reappeared after coming out of the strange coffin, he was unhappy about being teleported to a new place without warning. He then asked Raven about the nature of the fantasy world he had visited, and Raven confirmed that it was indeed a fantasy world. After their conversation, Hao Ren said goodbye and headed home, bringing back some wolf fur from the fantasy world. However, his departure was interrupted by another call from Raven, who shared exciting news about a European trip. It turns out, Raven had secured three plane tickets to England, where they would meet an important person who would become their new roommate. A few days later, Hao Ren, Li Li and Vivian set off on their journey to Europe, with Li Li got the window seat on the plane and looked forward to seeing the views from above. After hours of flying, they landed in England and followed Raven's instructions to reach their hotel. However, Lee Lee hesitated about walking a long distance, suggesting they take a taxi instead and Vivian also seemed tired during the journey. At that moment, Hao Ren expressed concern about potential language barriers in England and asked Vivian about her English skills. Surprisingly, Vivian claimed to be fluent, 
stating she had centuries of experience speaking the language, which left Hao Ren puzzled. Thankfully, Li Vian came up with a solution to their problem. She proposed using Li Li's keen sense of smell to find the hotel they were looking for. At first unsure, Li Li became interested when she heard about the delicious food awaiting them there, so she agreed to join Vivian in their search. Shortly after, they reached the hotel, which turned out to be luxurious and grand, with spacious and beautifully decorated rooms. Vivian, who loved luxury and cleanliness, was thrilled with the luxurious atmosphere. On the other hand, Lili wasted no time in ordering a variety of delicious dishes to satisfy her culinary desires. However, Hao Ren, worried that they were getting distracted from their mission given by Raven, reminded his friends to stay focused. Later, Hao Ren tried to get information about a place called Yorkford with the help of Zhang Duan. But Zhang Duan hesitated, explaining that the system software was outdated and needed updating before they could proceed with Raven's tasks. Additionally, Zhang Duan cautioned Hao Ren to be careful in his dealings with Raven, highlighting the risk of facing severe consequences, such as her powerful lightning-based punishments. However, before Hao Ren could fully grasp Zhang Duan's advice, Raven intervened swiftly, reprimanding him with the lightning bolt for his negative comments. Meanwhile, Vivian took the initiative to explore the area using her bat and discovering strange anomalies. However, her investigation was interrupted when she encountered an individual named Samba Mangong, who claimed to be from China. During their conversation, Samba shared unsettling information about Yorkford, describing it not as a peaceful place, but as an abandoned area with eerie castle, ruins stretching over 10 kilometers. Additionally, Samba warned them about the alleged hauntings associated with Yorkford, according to local legends. Hearing this, Vivian speculated that Samba might be a demon hunter and wanted to discuss her theory with Hao Ren. However, their conversation was interrupted when Samba joined them after overhearing their discussion. At that moment, Samba confidently declared himself as a genuine demon hunter, but Vivian remained doubtful, suggesting that a true demon hunter wouldn't openly boast about their profession. The situation became more interesting when Samba attempted to teleport to their balcony to prove his claim. However, his attempt failed, almost resulting in an accident that was narrowly avoided thanks to Hao Ren's quick action. Inside the room, Samba tried to prove his identity as a demon hunter by showcasing a powerful demon hunting spell. In the end, his demonstration convinced Hao Ren and the others, leading them to agree to accompany him on their journey to Yorkford. After reaching an agreement, they decided to depart early the next morning at 6 a.m. for Yorkford, following which Samba retired to his own room. After that, Hao Ren was curious about why Vivian decided to go with Samba, prompting her to share her suspicions about him. Despite her doubts, she chose to keep a close eye on Samba, being cautious about any potential uncertainties. In the evening, it boarded a train bound for Yorford. However, there was tension between Vivian and Li Li during the journey, because Vivian refused to sit with Li Li. While on the train, they watched a television program where a reporter interviewed Angus, who shared eerie tales about Yorkford. Angus revealed that the ancient castle had been in ruins for centuries and was rumored to be haunted by ghosts. Surprisingly, the British government had offered a reward to anyone who could resolve the ghostly issues. Vivian, excited by the opportunity, looked forward to visiting the castle and claiming the reward. After several hours of travel, they reached the area of Yorkford Castle. There, they met Angus, the person they saw on TV, who happened to work as the inn's receptionist. Initially hesitant about room availability, Angus relented upon seeing their tiredness, granting them two bedrooms. After that, Angus asked about their plans regarding the castle ruins and the ghostly mystery. Samba, showing confidence, revealed himself as a demon hunter. This revelation led Angus to reveal that he was the owner of the hotel. Seeing an opportunity, Samba asked Angus for a map of Yorkford Castle, as it wasn't on his own map. Angus agreed and invited Samba and Hao Ren to discuss the history of Yorkford Castle before its decline. After the conversation, Hao Ren hurried to share the knowledge with the VN. However, when he returned to the room he shared with Samba, he accidentally surprised Samba, who was holding a cherished photograph of his younger sister. Samba explained the photo's importance, stressing its value for him. As night fell, they went to bed, bidding each other good night and looking forward to a peaceful sleep. Meanwhile, Angus was occupied guiding guests to see the famous ghost of Yorkford Castle. However, Samba had a secret plan. He quietly watched Angus from his room window using binoculars. Ha Ren was unaware of these events until Vivian urgently woke him up with news of Samba's decision to follow Angus, 
and the other guests to the castle alone. Vivian urged Hao Ren to quickly join Samba. So, Hao Ren woke up Li Li, and they prepared to continue their journey. As they headed to the castle, Angus expressed a preference to accompany two other guests instead of Hao Ren and his crew. Vivian then lead the way, flying alongside Hao Ren to intercept Angus's vehicle, while Li Li, still sleepy, took a shortcut to reach Yorkford Castle. When they reached the castle, they found many hotel guests gathering for exorcism rituals. However, Vivian skillfully cleared them out, ensuring a quiet environment for their investigation. With the area emptied, the team entered the spooky castle ruins, once a church, to explore the talked-about ghost mystery and search for a hidden room where the new tenant supposedly hid. Guided by Zhang Duan's light, they navigated through the maze-like corridors until they stumbled upon the hidden room. As they ventured deeper into the castle, they were surprised by the size of the secret room, which drained their energy unexpectedly. Their exploration was abruptly interrupted by a strange noise that caught their attention. Following the mysterious sound, they came across Angus, who seemed to be plotting to steal the castle's hidden treasures. Li Li then came up with a plan to scare Angus by pretending to be a ghostly figure. Surprisingly, her trick worked perfectly, causing Angus to flee in fear. With Angus gone, they continued onward, eventually reaching an alley decorated with strange symbols recognized by Vivian. Driven by curiosity, Vivian touched one of the symbols, triggering a magical reaction that activated a barrage of arrows aimed at them. Quickly, Hao Ren activated his protective shield, allowing them to take shelter in a nearby room and escape the arrow traps. Suddenly, they were chased by a group of knights wearing armor. Showing incredible bravery, Li Li confronted the knights and even managed to grab one of their swords. It became clear that these knights were protectors tasked with guarding a magical stone. With the knights chasing them closely, they hurriedly retreated to a room where they encountered a massive magical stone hanging from above, held in place by a chain. Meanwhile, as the trio explored the dungeon, Samba chose a different path. Faced with various clever traps, Samba showed his cleverness. Sensing a surge of strong magic coming from a corridor, he used his enchanted paper to break through the walls in hopes of finding the magic stones. However, his attempt accidentally broke the seal around the magic stone, leading to unforeseen consequences. At the same time, Han Ren, Li Li, and Vivian were being attacked by armored knights due to Samba's unintentional action, which Samba quickly stepped in to help them with his demon hunter arrows, defeating some of their enemies. During the clash, Li Li used her extraordinary powers to fight the soldiers, while Ha Ren created a magical barrier to shield himself and Vivian, as she needed time to gather her magical strength. Li Li confronted the soldiers and holding them back to give Vivian the chance to concentrate. Unfortunately, Samba also found himself surrounded and ran out of arrows. Unfortunately, Li Li hit him with a rock, which causing him to lose consciousness. In that intense moment, Vivian finished her meditation and unleashed her powerful magic quickly incapacitating their enemies. But their relief was short-lived as the magical stone above them transformed into the menacing demon king, Gudaemon Yizakese. Yizakese then attacked, prompting Hao Ren to quickly create a protective shield for their defense. Unable to break through the shield, Yizakese decided to capture Hao Ren and Samba. However, Vivian and Li Li chasing after Yizakese. Upon reaching him, Vivian demanded that Yizakese release Hao Ren and Samba. Surprisingly, Yisakisi referred to Hao Ren as the landlord of the house, revealing that Hao Ren was supposed to be the new tenant, renting a room in his own home. However, Hao Ren found Yisakisi's menacing appearance frightening, especially when Yisakisi unleashed his powerful magical abilities, destroying the remaining castle ruins. Aware of the looming danger, Hao Ren urged Yisakisi to take on a human form to avoid drawing attention. The next day, Hao Ren decided to discuss the mysterious Yisakisi with Raven, who revealed the truth about the new tenant in Hao Ren's house. Later that evening, during dinner together, Vivian and Li Li were surprised to see Yisakesi's hearty appetite, accompanied by generous servings of soy sauce, which added a unique flavor to his meal. After dinner, Yisakesi expressed his intention to find a job to fulfill his rental obligations to Hao Ren. He shared his past as a businessman, recounting a challenging experience where his partner's betrayal led to bankruptcy. Yisakesi also emphasized his strict adherence to rules. Over time, Yisakesi's presence brought liveliness to the house, especially when he acted as a mediator during disagreements between Vivine and Li Li. The next day, still feeling sleepy, Hao Ren met with Raven. 
Despite his complaints about the early hour, Raven reminded him of the importance of the new assignment, urging him to keep things in perspective. While walking through the park, Hao Ren encountered a young girl named Wu Yu, Nun Gong playing guitar on a bench. Although Wu Yu greeted him, Hao Ren was in a hurry to meet Raven and didn't respond. Upon reaching Raven's office, Hao Ren was informed about a spaceship problem 895 light years away, requiring the rescue of a stranded occupant. Reluctantly agreeing to the mission, Hao Ren asked about the methods of interstellar travel. Raven then revealed a teleportation room for this purpose and mentioned that besides the extraterrestrial tenant, another person was waiting to arrive at Hao Ren's house. At the same time, Wu Yu entered the room and introduced herself as his mission partner because of her expertise in diving. After receiving instructions for their upcoming mission, Hao Ren and Wu Yu returned home, where Wu Yu got to know the other residents. She revealed herself as a descendant of Sirens, an ancient sea dwelling race, offers a fascinating insight into its non human heritage. The next morning, Hao Ren, Wu Yu, and Izakisi gathered outside the house, ready to embark on their mission through the teleportation portal operated by Zhang Duan. With a sudden flash of light, they found themselves on a spaceship, warmly welcomed by a guide. Contrary to Hao Ren's expectations, outer space appeared calm, lacking the anticipated alien activity creating a peaceful atmosphere on the spaceship. Following the guide's instructions, they proceeded to a room where a holographic image of the captain appeared, promising to transport them to their destination planet at an impressive speed of 10,000 kilometers per hour. However, their trip was interrupted by the appearance of an enemy ship, causing the captain to increase the ship's speed to pursue it. As they neared their destination, a new order instructed the team to switch to a smaller craft for a smoother landing. With Zhang Duan's guidance, they boarded the smaller spacecraft, but encountered a problem when the main door wouldn't open. His Xi stepped in, using his demonic powers to force the door open, allowing Hao Ren and Wu Yu to board the smaller spacecraft for their journey. As they descended through the planet's atmosphere, they marveled at the breathtaking scenery. However, their landing took a disastrous turn when their spacecraft crashed into the ocean. Struggling underwater and on the verge of losing consciousness, Hao Ren was saved just in time by Wu Yu, showcasing her skills as a siren. While unconsciousness, Hao Ren found himself in a dreamlike state where wolves engaged in a fierce battle. Showing bravery, he used his shield to stop the fight, catching the attention of the wolf pack's leader. Surprisingly, Hao Ren showed the wolf leader a piece of parchment with ancient symbols. But his dream was abruptly interrupted as he woke up. Upon waking, Hao Ren and his companions continued their mission to find the crashed spaceship and retrieved the new tenant for his residence. Guided by Zhang Duan, they reached the crash site, only to find it empty. Undeterred, they went to another location where the cargo cabin had sunk 5,000 meters below the ocean's surface. Wu Yu, using her aquatic abilities, dived into the sea with Hao Ren, who was aided by Wu Yu's magic to breathe underwater. Searching diligently, they scanned the seabed until they discovered a cargo cabin. Surprisingly, they found only a single egg inside one of the compartments. Wu Yu spotted it first and informed Raven through holographic communication. Raven then confirmed that they had found the new tenant, which had yet to hatch egg. However, in their excitement, Wu Yu accidentally dropped the egg. Luckily, it remained unharmed, easing their worries about the success of their mission. After that, they headed back to the mainland, expecting another spacecraft to pick them up. But Raven arrived in her own spaceship, the Hybrid Turtle, announcing it as a gift to Hao Ren taking charge as the captain Hao Ren, with Zhang Duan's help as the pilot, quickly set off in the ship, heading back to their previous ship's base. Meanwhile, chaos erupted at Hao Ren's home, with Li Li causing trouble all around. To control her disruptive behavior, Vivian had to restrain Li Li until Hao Ren and the others returned and saw the chaos. Realizing the seriousness of the situation, they decided to seek Raven's help for Li Li. After handing Li Li over to Raven, they learned from her that Li Li's behavior was due to an impending evolutionary process. However, Raven assured them that her advanced equipment could help stabilize Li Li. Following this, Hao Ren stayed behind for a private talk with Raven, during which she revealed that Li Li's life could only be preserved by completing the entire evolutionary process. The next day, Hao Ren informed the group about Li Li's situation, prompting Vi Vi to create special potions to help Li Li in her evolution. They decided to camp on top of a mountain to allow Li Li to evolve freely under the light of the full moon. As they prepared throughout the night, exhaustion eventually caught up with them, 
leading to an unintended period of sleep while they waited for Li Li's transformation. However, Li Li, sensing the change coming, she emerged from the tent, howling loudly under the bright light of the full moon. After that, everyone woke up to witness Li Li's remarkable evolution. But Li Li underwent a dramatic change into a powerful dog, losing control and running towards the city. Unfortunately, Vivian's potion didn't work as expected, making Li Li's behavior even more uncontrollable. Luckily, Wu Yu used her special siren abilities, calming Li Li with her enchanting voice and turning her back into a human. With the crisis avoided, they could now focus on minimizing the damage caused by Li Li's rampage in the city. Meanwhile, the Yuan brothers secretly watched these events. Taking advantage of Li Li's transformation, they planned to exploit the situation for their own gain. Upon bringing Li Li back home, Hao Ren tried to calm her and help her fall asleep. But their peace was short-lived as the Yuan brothers launched a surprise attack. They incapacitated Hao Ren and took Li Li to an unknown place. Using powerful magical barriers, they kept Li Li trapped in their headquarters, making escape impossible. Despite Li Li's attempts to resist, the Yuan brothers' strong magical abilities stopped her, leaving her unable to break free. Their true intentions was to capture others like themselves to form a group, hoping to gain respect and recognition from other races. Meanwhile, when Hao Ren regained consciousness, still feeling dazed from the attack, he was quickly informed about Li Li's abduction to Yisekisi and the others. Recalling the events before he was knocked out, he shared what happened leading to Li Li's kidnapping. Hearing this, they acted quickly, following Vivian's bat, which led them to a steel factory, where Li Li was held captive. Upon reaching there, Hao Ren and Vivian confronted one of the Yuan siblings, who had the power to change shapes. Though challenging at first, they eventually outsmarted and cornered the elusive Yuan brothers. On the other hand, Yisekisi and Wu Yu stumbled upon another entrance, leading them to find a group of factory workers playing mahjong. Captivated by the game, Yisekisi decided to join in, enjoying the activity with the workers. Meanwhile, Hao Ren faced the formidable Yuan brothers, known for their strength. Instead of direct combat, he chose to use his agility, skillfully dodging their attacks. However, Zhang Duan grew impatient, encouraging Hao Ren to use his physical abilities and fight the brothers. Despite his doubts about his fighting skills, Hao Ren reluctantly decided to confront them. When he spotted Li Li in the chaos, he urged her to escape. But their escape was blocked once more as the transformed Yuan brothers intervened to stop them. Preferring negotiation over conflict, Hao Ren and Vivian tried to talk to the brothers, hoping to understand the reason they abducted Li Li. Their conversation revealed a misunderstanding, where the brothers mistakenly thought Li Li was forced to live with Hao Ren, unaware that she chose to stay voluntarily. During their discussion, they were suddenly surrounded by demon hunters. Working together, they fought off the attackers to ensure they could safely leave the dangerous situation. In the battle, the Yuan brothers were badly hurt by the relentless attacks of the demon hunters. One of them was injured by a knife and immobilized by freezing magic. With the situation becoming dire and the demon hunters ready to finish them, Hao Ren and Li Li intervened. Li Li used her powers to scare off the attackers and protect the Yuan brothers. Afterwards, they went to the forest to recover, with one of the Yuan brothers seriously injured. Luckily, Wu Yu had incredible healing abilities, so she used her powers to heal the injured brother. It turns out, the leader of the demon hunters continued to pursue them, leading to a confrontation. Hisakesi, undeterred by the threat, demonstrated his immense strength by effortlessly deflecting the knives thrown by the hunters. Trying to persuade the leader to stop the violence, Yisekisi asked him to spare innocent lives. Unfortunately, the leader refused to listen, so Yisekisi had to use his powers to incapacitate him with a simple gesture. However, the demon hunters took Wu Yu as a hostage in response. Quickly, Samba infiltrated the enemy and rescued Wu Yu, preventing a disaster once again. Later, Samba visited Hao Ren's home, and faced the Yuan brothers with determination. But Yisekisi stepped in as a mediator, calming the situation. Surprisingly, the Yuan brothers apologized to Yisekisi, showing remorse for their actions. As they tried to reconcile, a sudden power outage occurred in Hao Ren's house, raising concerns of an attack. However, it turned out that the electricity bill hadn't been paid, causing the blackout. The tenants came together to help Hao Ren with his financial problem. Meanwhile, Hao Ren tried to get a loan from Raven without success. When he returned home, he found the electricity was back on, and there was a delicious food waiting for them on the table. 
Hao Ren was surprised by the sudden change in the situation and asked how it happened. He was amazed to learn that his friends had worked hard all day to gather enough money to pay the utility bills and prepare the delicious meal. While enjoying the food and the cheerful atmosphere, Hao Ren remembered the egg meant for the new occupant. To his surprise, he found that Wu Yu had placed the egg in the kitchen, where Li Li was about to boil it. The story comes to an end. Moral lesson from this story, if you're looking for treasure, don't get too scared if you find a dark room. It might just be that your unpaid bill is the scary thing inside. And always be careful about using eggs for breakfast, or you might end up making your future roommate's breakfast your own.